I'm Lisa, and this is Happy Scrappy Life, a podcast about knitting, crochet, mini skeins, scrappy projects, and lots of life chabber. It's been a couple weeks now since I've talked to you, actually a little bit more than a couple weeks. I think I recorded on a Friday last time. Today is Monday, November 13th, 2017. I put off recording because my hubby and I were working crazy hard this past weekend to get all of the October swapless swaps posted, uh, put into the mail. And we did. And that means that all of you that ordered Christmas advent calendars, they are on their way to you. I hope you love them. There's also some other mini bundles that went out to people. I hope everybody loves them. And now we're working away on November's. On to the next month. But before we get into any of that, let me just give you a little bit of info about where you can find me. I am Happy Scrappy Life on Instagram and on Ravelry. Uh, I have a Ravelry group for the podcast, Happy Scrappy Life Podcast. And I would love for you to join us over there. There's lots of jabbering and chatter going on. And if you want to enter into any of the giveaways, you have to be a member of the group in order to win. Um, and then I also have a group on Ravelry called Sock Yarn Swappers, which is where I sell the mini skeins, and we'll talk about that later. And then I also have an Etsy shop, and I recently changed the name of that. It is now Happy Scrappy Life. So that's pretty much where you can find me everywhere. On Facebook, I am Lisa Martin Woodruff, and I would love for you to follow me on any of those social media sites. They're all super fun. Um, of course, subscribe to the podcast here on YouTube and hit the notifications button. That way you can get notified whenever I post a new uh, podcast. I'm trying to get on a schedule, but it's going to be hard the next couple months with the holidays. There's just so much coming up with my trips and with, of course, Thanksgiving and Christmas, our daughter coming home to visit. So I'll do what I can, but January we will get way more regular for sure. Promise. So... How have you been? I've been great. Tom and I have had wonderful weekends. It's almost like we live for the weekends. You get through the week, you do your work, he goes to work, I work here on the minis, and we get to the weekends to just enjoy each other. So the last time I recorded was on a Friday, and I can't honestly can't even remember that weekend. That's crazy. Probably didn't do much of anything, just hung around the house, worked on minis, cuddled, watched TV, just relaxed, watched football, probably lots of football. Last weekend, not this like yesterday, but the weekend before, we went to the Amish country. He actually surprised me on Wednesday night and he told me that, guess what, honey? The weekend is starting tonight. Tomorrow is the beginning of our weekend. He had surprised me and taken Thursday and Friday off of work. So we had four days. He said he just wanted to be with me, and I just thought that was wonderful. So he surprised me. We had a wonderful weekend. We actually went to the Amish country. We have an Amish country here close to us, about maybe an hour, hour and a half from our house, and we love it. It's Berlin, Ohio, uh, Sugar Creek, Charm, Walnut Creek. Um, if you're ever in the area, you should totally check it out. We love it. There's lots of nice little shops we like to go to, and of course the restaurant Stir Dutchman's beautiful and delicious. And then there's a little town called Charm that has a fabric shop that I absolutely love. And we like to get cheese at Pearl Valley Cheese. It's just it's a wonderful time. We eat a lot, we spend money that we probably shouldn't, but it was a fun getaway. And he actually bought boots for work and ended up going back. They didn't fit, so we ended up having to go back and get boots again exchange them um, a couple days later. So we made two trips to the Amish country that weekend. <laughs> and then last weekend, just like yesterday, we pretty much just hung around home. We did minis, worked on minis, got out all of the Christmas ones, all of the October swaps put into the mail. So that's fantastic. And then on Sunday, yesterday was November 12th and 29 years ago. 29 crazy that we've been together that long tom and i went on our very first date and i posted a picture you may have seen it on instagram and on facebook i'll add it in here uh 
um, us looking young and skinny and no wrinkles and no gray hair, but looking very happy and very in love. That photo was probably taken maybe a month after we had started dating. And it's so crazy to look at that and think of all the years we've been together and all the time that's passed and the things we've been through. And it's wonderful to know that I've gotten to spend my entire life loving him. He's a wonderful man. He loves me so much. We've grown up together and we're very blessed to have the relationship that we do and to enjoy each other as much as we do. So yesterday we went to church and then after church he surprised me and we went to Pizza Hut for lunch, which on our very first date, that's where we went was Pizza Hut. We went to a football game, high school football game. Um, we were young, I was 16, he was 19. And then we went to Pizza Hut. So he surprised me, we went to Pizza Hut, we sat there and talked about memories and all lovey googly stuff. So it was a nice romantic day. So, but that's enough of the jabbering. That's pretty much my last couple weeks, such a catch up, not a whole lot. Uh, some knitting, some exciting things to talk about. Excuse me, but let's just jump right into it. So I have been a starting fool, crazy starting fool. But first I'll show you the first project that I've been working on, which you saw last week or last time I posted. And it is a pair of my scrappy socks, which if you have not yet checked out, I totally think you should. The happy scrappy socks, K-A-L. That's our hashtag on Instagram. And it's a knit along that we've got going on in the Ravelry group. It started, I don't even remember, but it runs all the way until January 31st. So there's an FO thread over in the group. There's a chatter thread and an FO thread. And you can post your FOs in there. Any socks, doesn't matter, whips are fine. Um, size is fine, doesn't matter. They just need to be scrappy. They can't be just from one skein of yarn or just one skein and heels or whatever. It needs to be scrappy socks. But there's already lots of finished objects over there. I can't believe it. You guys are doing awesome. They look so good. And I know others of you are working and getting close to the ends. And you've still got months and months. So just keep on working on your scrappy socks. I have one pair here that I had been working on. You guys have seen them a couple times. This is the... Well, let's try to get them both up here. Well, here they are just hanging from the needles, but they're getting there. These are my query, I think that's how you say it, fiber self-striping socks. And I am loving them. These are the two yarns I'm working with right now. And then I've got two more coming up. These were from a uh, swapless swap in the group. Um, query self-striping swapless swap 40 yard so there were 10 colors and I am going to be adding in all of them so I am on my eighth colors right now so I have one more of each on each sock to add last time we talked I was here so I've worked some but not as much as I should have but you'll see why in a minute but I had finished the uh, heel the flap and the gusset the heel turn, I think I was working on the gusset, it looks like, yeah, I was working on decreasing the gusset. So I've gotten it all dis decreased now, and I am working down the foot. So this is how they'll look once they're on this one, and then this one. I'm hoping that they fit. I'm so curious to get them finished. This is my first pair of heel flap and gusset that I've knit really ever. I mean, I've knit a pair or two, but they weren't, I didn't, know what I was doing. It was when I first started. So I feel a little bit more confident now, but we'll see. I'm hoping they fit me better than the fish lips kiss um, with my high end step in my, in my heel. So I'm anxious to get them done, but yet I'm so distracted with the projects I've started. I can't help it. I like to start projects. It's way more fun. And of course they're all blankets, so they're big and they're going to take forever, but it's fun. So anyway, these are my query self-striping socks. Like I said, I was here, I've got here. I think I've got maybe, I don't know. It's hard because this is my first time doing it. But from what I've read, I think I'm supposed to go to eight and a quarter or something inches and then start my toe, which I'm gonna try to do a spiral 
where you decrease all the way around and just um, pull the, your yarn through to close it up, no kitchener. So I'm getting close to where it'll be time to start decreasing my for my toes. I've still got a little ways, but that's them. Hopefully I will just give them some more time. I had really hoped to just get them done for today's podcast, but like I said, I've been distracted. So you'll see those in a little bit. But that is the first project that I'm working on, and this is in a fat squirrel fiber bag. I love her bags. You'll see that most of these bags are her bags. So that's the first one, and that is for the Happy Scrappy Socks, K-A-L. Be sure to join in, and if you're on Instagram, make sure to use the hashtag. We've got some prizes. I'm giving away a spot in a swapless swap, and then we've also got a bag that was donated by Stitches by Tanya, and pictures are over in the Ravelry group, and if you've got any other prizes you want to donate, let me know. I'm always looking for prizes and giveaways and fun stuff for the group. So that's the first project. So, oh, I'm sure you probably already assumed this because there will be a party if I ever actually have a finished object. No FOs again this week. I'm so sorry. I really feel like a failure, but this is Lisa. I'm sorry. I'm not much of a finisher. Hopefully I can be soon. If I could just stay focused, if I could just start a project, work on that project, finish that project, go to the next project. Are any of you like that? Do any of you do it that way? I just, it's hard for me. And then when I find a project I'm completely addicted to, it's a blanket, of course, and it's gonna take forever. And then I think of all the other projects I love that I have that I wanna work on. Speaking of which, I'm pretty sure in the last podcast I said that for the next two weeks, I thought that I probably would be focusing hard on my mitered square blanket and on my granny stripe bank blanket, crochet. Haven't touched either one of them. Maybe in the next two weeks, but I seriously doubt it because of the travel. They'll be hard to take with me on traveling. So probably not. Maybe January I'll settle in with those. It's crazy. But I have new projects I've started. I've actually started three new projects since we talked last. Cuckoo. So I'll show you the first one. Um, actually, I think it probably is the first one I started of the three, two. It is a crochet project. Woohoo! I'm actually crocheting. And it is the corner to corner crochet blanket. We found out that my oldest nephew, his name's Jacob, and his wife Stacy are having a baby. It'll be the very first baby for that next generation. And of course, I'm super excited. And of course, I immediately thought, what can I knit or crochet for this baby? I'm sure there'll be baby showers and everything else. So with the crochet along that we've got going on, which is called the Crazy Happy Crochet Along, spelled out, that's our hashtag, by the way, I'm trying to learn how to put words on the screen, but I just can't figure it out. I'm hoping if I can't get it, I can get my daughter to teach me on Thanksgiving or my brother when I go down to Florida. So hopefully I'll get it showing up here, but if not, I will hopefully be able to soon. Everything will be in the show notes. But we have a crochet along going on as well as our knit along. This one I'm doing with Kay of the Crazy Sock Lady podcast. She's awesome. I love watching her podcast. She's just adorable and she works on so many different things and gets things done. She actually has FOs, so if you like FOs, check out her podcast. <laughs> but she and I are working together, and we are doing the Crazy Happy Crochet Along. We kind of morphed our names together, which is fun. And this one's super simple too, even easier than the sock one. For this one, there's only chatter threads, no FO threads. There'll be a chatter thread in Kay's group and a chatter thread in my group. You can double dip in both of them. With all of my knit alongs or crochet alongs, you are encouraged to double dip anywhere else. If you can find other people doing the same things, join up. Get as many prizes as you can. But she and I are doing this one. It, ran, it runs, it started November 1st and it runs until January 31st. FOs are, or I'm sorry, whips are fine you could have already been working on it we're guessing there probably will be lots of blankets so you can't really i mean you could but it'd be difficult to get something get a big blanket finished in that amount of time so 
no FO threads, just chatter. We'll be pulling prizes from both of them. Um, she'll be getting prizes and I will. Uh, again, if you want to donate a prize, let me know. And I've got prizes. I'm pretty sure it's the same thing. We've got another bag from Stitches by Tanya and a spot in a swapless swap. But then I'd love to add more prizes, of course. So what I started, I knew I needed to get crocheting. And I was going to work on the granny stripe, but then I found out about, well, I knew already about Jacob and Stacy. But I thought this was the perfect opportunity. I'd been wanting to try a corner to corner. I was honestly a little bit intimidated. I thought it would be difficult, but it's not. If you have not done one yet and you're looking to participate in the crochet along, I highly recommend that you check out the corner to corner. I am using, checking to make sure what her name is. I think it's Jaden. Jaden in Stitches has a video on YouTube, tutorial, video tutorial, about how to do a corner to corner blanket. And hers is actually how to do a rectangled one. So, but you can take the information to do a square very easily. But this one is mine. So I've made a little bit of progress so far. I started this, uh, I believe November 1st. And can you see it? Here it is so far. So I'm moving right along. This little heart down here, that was my little start point. Of course, I just literally just started. So we'll scooch that up after we talk. But this is it. And as you can see, it goes from the corner down here and builds out this way. So then eventually, when it gets to the width that I want it, then I can either make it a rectangle where I would decrease on one side and continue increasing on the other, or I'll just decrease on both sides and just square it out. So it's gonna be a baby blanket. Um, I think it's about maybe 20 inches right now, I don't remember. I'm thinking I'm gonna take it to about 40, 35 or 40, and probably just square this one, I haven't decided. But it's cotton yarn, I'm using um, cotton brown sheep, I probably don't have a note in here. It'll be on my um, Ravelry page. But it's brown sheep yarn um, and it's cotton. I can't remember what that's called, that's terrible. But it's worsted weight. And it's in a fat squirrel fibers bag too. Nope, you know what, this might not be fat squirrel. No, I think this is Bags by Awesome Granny. Yeah, this is Bags by Awesome Granny. And the crochet hook I'm using is a G, USG 4.25 millimeters. And I'm using the gray color and the white. <laughs> the, my ball just kind of fell apart. And then I'm also gonna add some lime green. Man, my, ball, my cakes are just a mess. I'm also going to add this lime green, some stripes of it. Stacy, the mom-to-be, loves lime green. And when we started, I didn't know if it was going to be a girl or a boy So when I started the blanket. So I thought I would just make this one a little neutral and, and it can be either. So my thought is, I think what I'm going to do, is I've done, I did 20 um, rows of the gray. And then I did 10 of the white. And then I think I'm gonna do 10 of the gray. Yeah, 10 of the gray and then 10 of the lime. So that'd be 40 rows, if I'm thinking this right, that would be 40 rows across all together. And then at that point, start decreasing down and do the same thing again backwards. So then do 10 of the lime, 10 of the gray, 10 of the white, and then 20 of the gray. That's my plan. But it's definitely moving along. I love how fast crochet is. And I'll bring it a little closer here so you can kind of see. This one here is just me holding my stitch so it doesn't fall out. But this is the stitch. Super easy. I just, I love it. So that's the corner to corner. I'm calling it Jake and Stacy, Jacob and Stacy's corner to corner blanket. Maybe baby blanket, baby afghan. I don't know but that's that 
So if you are working on any crochet projects at all, they can be blankets, they can be anything at all, socks, hats, anything. I would love for you to join in with us. Maybe you'll win a prize, you'll be motivated to work on your crochet, and that's mine. So, next project. I have found a blanket that I am literally addicted to knitting. Honestly, I can't remember how I originally discovered it. I think that it was on Instagram. I'm pretty sure it was probably on Instagram. That's usually where everything, where I get enabled on things. But this blanket, you may have seen me do, I did a little Insta story about it. It's called the Bits and Bobs Afghan. And it is by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears podcast. And their podcast is great. It's a husband and wife team. But she came up with this pattern. And it's a scrappy type project, which you know I love. And I can use up all of my minis and my magic knot balls. And I started one. So the first one I started, it's in my Fat Squirrels, Fat Squirrel Fibers library bag. This literally is my very favorite bag of all time. I love this bag. Actually trying to decide if it is safe to take with me to my on my trip that I'm going on because I will be flying home and if it got lost on the airplane I don't think I would want to take it on the plane because it's so big so if it got lost in my luggage I would ball my eyes out but I want it with me because I love it so we'll see about that I'll keep you posted but this project is the bits and bobs afghan oh you know what <laughs> this one isn't the first one I started that's in this bag yet another Fat Squirrel Fibers bag. Pretty awesome, right? Her bags are the best, the best. Her podcast is the best and her bags are the best. So this is actually the first one I started. And I'm in the middle of a row, of course. That's terrible, bad podcaster. Bad, bad, bad podcaster got to get in the habit of getting a row finished but a blanket my goodness that takes forever so this is the blanket so here is one end just to give you an idea this is a 60 inch cord and as you can see it's pretty bunched up on the cord so it's going to be a nice big blanket it's going to be my plan is i want it to be nice and big for tom and i to cuddle up under the under on the couch or in our room it's just a really nice squishy blanket. So, I don't even know where to start. I'm just so excited about this project. Let me give you a close up. So this, that is the stitch. And of course, we'll flip her around. Same thing on the other side. As you can see, it's very squishy and cuddly. So I can't tell you exactly what it is. It's a paid for pattern. I believe it was maybe six or seven dollars. Totally worth it. The pattern, this stitch alone, just learning how to do this stitch and getting the idea of what the stitch is alone will rock your world. <laughs> At least it rocked my world. I love this project. I cannot get enough of working on this project. But I think it's because of the, well, of course it's the scrappiness of it. I love that part of it. But then I also think that it is the squishiness of it. For me, I've never seen in person, but from what I've seen on videos, on podcasts, it reminds me of brioche. Like it, it looks to me like what I think brioche looks like. And it's very squishy, like how I imagine brioche to be but it's not brioche. I think with, I don't know how to do it, but I think you have to like knit stitches twice or something. I don't know, it sounds very complicated to me. But for this one, it's strictly knitting and it's strictly just straight across knitting. Um, like I said, it's a pay for pattern, so I can't tell you what you do, but I highly recommend you checking it out. So in the pattern, I don't remember how many she says to cast on, but I knew I wanted this big. So for this one, I cast on 271 stitches and it's a US seven needle that I'm using. Um, you can't even see the, wow, I got a mess here. 
can't even see, but it is Chiago Red Lace, like always. I love these. And you hold two strands of fingering weight yarn. So it's fingering weight yarn held double. And the idea is you, you do one strand that is a neutral color, and then the second strand that is bits and bobs, that it's scrappiness, it's scraps, or mini skeins or magic knot balls, and you just knit them up together. You don't worry about color placement. You don't worry about any of that. And you just knit. It is so relaxing and it is so intuitive. Once you get going, you can read your knitting and you know what to do for the next stitch. You don't have to worry about the pattern. You don't have to worry about what you did last time. You just, you can tell. So for this one, at least for now, if I'll probably run out and then I'll have to maybe change my background or buy some more. But for now, I've got this, I don't even remember the name of it, yarn. I have a bunch of it. I don't remember. That's terrible. I don't remember at all. Um, but it's just a neutral creamish color, tan color yarn. And then I'm using magic knot balls. So this is the very, very end of the one that I'm working on right now. And if you're very noticing, you may remember that you have seen this. There is a matching magic knot ball right here that's the same as this. Can you remember what it was? These originally were a pair of my happy scrappy socks. They were, this is minis from a Haverland um, swapless swap that I did um, earlier this year or maybe last year, I don't remember. And I was gonna make happy scrappy socks with them. I had started them and I had a toe basically. It's where I get on socks sometimes and then move on. And I liked them, they're nice, they're beautiful socks and I knew they would be nice. But then I found this project and I thought, I just wanna work on this project. And I thought these would this would be nice because it's already in a magic knot ball, it was in two of them. And they were already in a magic knot ball and I could just knit and knit and knit and while I made more magic knot balls to keep working on it. So I ripped out those socks. And so this is about 50 grams because um, I made two of them because I was originally gonna make socks with it. So this is about 50 grams of yarn. And as you can see, I've got, I don't know how many inches, maybe two or three inches here. And that's how much one made. But like I said, I've got a huge amount of cast on here. So I've got another one of those. And then I've got a great big magic knot ball this is a 100 gram one that I will be working from. And then I made this littler one too that is probably about 50 grams as well. So that's what I've got in my bag right now. I'll keep adding magic knot balls and um, backgrounds as I need them. I'd like to keep them all this tannish cream colored, not, yeah, tan or cream colored yarn for my background um, for this blanket. I can. I could do grays or other colors, and I may end up having to do that. We'll see what happens. But I um, would like to keep it this tan, brownish tan color all, of, all the way through. But it's a great way to use up your mini skeins if you're part of the Swapless Swaps or if you have Magic Knot Balls, which I do sell Magic Knot Balls in my Etsy shop, Happy Scrappy Life on Etsy. Um, this is an example of what you would get it's about 100 grams, maybe a little more, and lots of different, you can't really see in here, but lots of different colors, and it's a center pole, so you can work right from the middle. Comes out very easily, and I just knot the ends together. Um, there's a video, Bella Crochet, I'm pretty sure her name is on YouTube, uh, that did a tutorial on how to do a magic knot, to make magic knot balls, how to do the knot. Um, so I can link to that in the show notes. But that is my Bits and Bobs Afghan Completely Addicted. So I started that. That is what got all of my attention. Of course, it's 271 stitches across, which takes a while to get across. And I knew it would end up being huge. I wasn't sure how far I would get before um, Thanksgiving when we go to Ashley's and then I go on to Florida. 
And I knew that it would be too big to take with me. Even at this size, it would be kind of big and cumbersome to take. But I was enjoying this stitch so much and it's so relaxing. So I decided to start a second one. Why not? That's what sane people do. You've already got 5,000 projects on the needle. So what are you gonna do? Let's just start another blanket. I'm a crazy person, plain and simple but I can't help it. I'm addicted. I'm addicted to starting projects. And right this moment, I am addicted to the bits and bobs Afghan. So now in the, my very favorite fat squirrel bag, I started a second one. So as I mentioned before with Jacob and Stacy, they are pregnant and she is due in March, which my birthday is in March. So I'm super excited about that. I'm hoping maybe it'll be on my birthday, which would be awesome but they just found out that they are having a girl. I love to have girls. That of course is what my baby was, my 24 year old baby. And so I was super excited about that. So I thought, well, that's the answer. I'll just start another blanket for them. They'll love it, they'll be happy. Who, you can have as many baby blankets as you need. So I started a Bits and Bobs, a smaller one, a baby blanket for them. So, and here is my progress so far. a little closer so you can kind of see the colors see how squishy and isn't it funny this one I'm using gray for the background and it's it just looks totally different to me so this is on a shorter cord of course and I only did 131 cast on for this one again it's two strands of fingering weight yarn for this one, I'm using gray for the background. This is Knit Picks um, Stroll, I think, Knit Picks Stroll, uh, which I have a couple balls of, um, but then I have other gray yarn and I'll, I'll just add more gray yarn as I need it. So this is my Bits and Bobs, Afghan, baby Afghan for Jacob and Stacy. So for this one, I decided since we found out that she was having a girl, that I would make all of the scrappy part would be pinks and purples. That's it, just pinks and purples. So as you can see, I've got some pinks and then some purples and now we're back into pink again. So yesterday before church, well, last week when I started, I just started it a few days ago, I don't remember what day, the ninth maybe. I um, kind of went through my mini scheme, left a, well there, I mean, they're not mini skeins, but they're from mini skeins. They're from Swapless Swaps. And these were leftovers that of swaps that I had made for other people, and I kept the leftovers. So I went through and found a bunch of pinks and purples and pulled them out, and I thought, well, I'll just knit from those. Well, yesterday before church, we were kind of just relaxing and watching, I don't even remember what, on TV. Oh, American Bible Challenge. <laughs> it's a game show on Netflix and it's uh, Bible questions and we are embarrassed to say we didn't know a lot of the answers. We thought, oh, this will be fun. We'll know lots of answers. No, we didn't. We knew some of the beginning answers, but not some of the later answers. So anyway, while we were watching that and waiting to go to church, I started a magic knot ball with pinks and purples, some of these minis that I had. So I've got one going here. It's not very big, but that's what I'm knitting from. Oops and I'll make some more. And I'm thinking I'll probably take this with me. This would be nice uh, in the car, but also it would be nice um, at the hotel. I think I'm excited to go, of course, but I'm gonna miss Tom a lot. And I think this will help kind of relax me and calm me. I enjoy the stitch a lot. And it's not as big around, so I can get through it pretty quick. So I need to make up a few more magic knot balls and I need to get some more gray yarn, but that's that. So this is my second one, Bits and Bobs. Again, I highly recommend you check out this pattern. It's just awesome. But it's so funny to me how different, just with the background alone, how different the blankets look. So like I said, this is the first one that I did, and this is the second one. To me, it gives such a different look. It's just, it's amazing. You can change it up so much. And of course, you could use two, you wouldn't have to use Bits and Bobs. You could do two full different types of skeins or whatever, but gray background and a tan cream colored background. 
So those are all of my current works in progress. I do have a bunch more projects to talk about uh, here in a minute. But first, let's talk about sock yarn swappers a little bit. Like I said, we got all of the October swaps mailed out. Um, they were supposed to go out by November 15th, but we got them mailed out this past weekend on the 11th. So that's good. So you probably all, if you're in the U.S., you'll probably get them this week sometime. Um, Canada and everywhere else takes a little longer, but they are on their way to you. The Christmas Advent calendars were part of that. So they all should definitely be there by the beginning of December for you to start each day. I'm so anxious for everyone to get them and let me know what you think of them. And if you like the whole premise, which they're in like a black um, a zipper bag, not a zipper, Ziploc type bag, but it's black so you can't see inside it. And Tom and I labeled each of the minis with the dyer and the colorway name. So each day you can just close your eyes and reach inside that baggie and pull out a mini and add it to your blanket or maybe some scrappy socks for our knit along, uh, whatever you want, or a hat, a scrappy hat would be fun too. But you can pull in, pull it out and knit up your little mini and then the next day do the same thing. If you enjoy this and then you enjoy the, uh, or if you missed out, either way. First of all, I definitely will be doing it next year for Christmas. I'll be posting a thread in the group probably towards the middle of the year. Um, so keep an eye out on Sock Yarn Swappers. You'll hear me talk about it here and posting on Instagram and Facebook, I'm sure. But before that, that wouldn't be till next December. Before that, I have one already posted for January. It closes January 15th, will ship by February 15th. And I'm calling that one Spring Fling Swapless Swap. And the idea behind it is it'll be the same thing, 25 minis in a dark bag, where you can't see them, each one individually labeled. You can reach in and pull one out, but they'll all be spring themed, light colors, pastel type colors, spring, and Easter, that type, springy type things. So you'll get them by February 15th, or I mean, I'm sorry, they'll ship by February 15th. So probably everyone would have them by the beginning of March. So March 1st, you could start pulling one out each day, and for the whole month leading up to the start of spring, you can add some fun spring type squares on your blankets or again, scrappy socks or hats or anything else you wanna knit or crochet. So that is called the Spring Fling Swapless Swap. It is in the group and there's still lots and lots of spots. I've opened it up to a whole bunch of people in case everyone, just so everyone can get it that wants it. And check that out. If you get your Christmas ones and you enjoy it, and want to do some more for spring, check it out. Um, right now in the group, we have November swaps. They will close November 15th. So that is only a couple days. Today's the 13th. So first of all, if you've signed up for any of these and you still owe money, money is due by uh, midnight on November 15th. So at that point, if you have not paid, unfortunately, I'll have to remove you from the swap um, and go on to anybody that's on the alternate list. But I will send out reminders probably this evening, maybe tomorrow night, to remind people, um, anyone that hasn't paid yet, I'll send reminders on Ravelry Messenger, private messenger. So also, though, a lot of those swaps still have spots open. So I would recommend checking them out if you're interested. Um, I have some photos, actually, of different ones. So I will add them in here as I'm talking. Um, either they will show on the screen completely and you won't see me a minute or maybe up in the corner. Again, I can't figure that out too well. But one of the swaps we have open is in the Crazy Sock Lady group that I mentioned Kay earlier. We're doing the knit along or crochet along, crochet along together. Um, I have a swap going on in her group and it is for What the Flock yarn. He is a very creative dyer who dyes very bright, fun colors. And he sent me a sneak peek photo of the yarns that I that he'll be sending me. So I will include those here. There's lots of spots still open. If anybody is interested, head on over to Kay's group 
and sign up. I'll put links. Um, I'll go ahead and put links for all the swaps down below in the down bar. And then of course in the show notes over on Ravelry. And then in the next, that is a 40 yard swap. So you will get 10 minis, 40 yards each. And it's $30 in the US, 35 for Canada and 40 for everywhere else. The next one that we have still open is Tangled Strings. Nope, that's wrong. Tangled Strings was last month. I've got something to show you about that. But the next one is Three Fates Yarn. And she does beautiful tonal yarns. And I'll be putting a picture in here in a minute. And <clears throat> we have both 20 and 40 yard swaps open for her. This one's in the Sock Yarn Swappers group. And her yarn's gorgeous. I believe there's spots open in both of those still. I'm pretty sure. Maybe not the 40 yard. I think there is in both. But head on over and check those out if you're interested. Again, the price is the same for those. 20 yard swap, um, for the 20 yard swapless swaps, you get 20 mini skeins. And for the 40 yard, you get 10, each a different color. And then and the next one that I'd like to talk to you about is called Twin Mommy Creations. And we have both a 20 and a 40 for that one as well. I'll add some pictures in here for hers. Beautiful yarns, a different, a wide assortment of um, variegated and tonals and brights and not so brights and just very nice yarn and spots are open in both of those as well and then the final swap for November is the yarn at home mom and I don't have a sneak peek for her yarn I'm hoping it'll get here soon and I can send that out on Instagram and Ravelry or um well Ravelry Facebook but I don't have a sneak peek for her but I can tell you her yarn is gorgeous and I'm working on the scrappy socks. I didn't work on a mini last week, but with her minis that I had purchased before, and they're beautiful. So both a 20 and 40 for that. I believe her 40 might be full, but check out the links. I'll put them all down below and they'll be in the show notes as well. So that's everything for Sock Yarn Swappers at the moment. Very soon, December swaps will be coming up. For December, we have, if I remember right, pressure's on now. Truly Hooked is over in Kay's group, and I know there's a bunch of spots still open on that. And Artistic Yarn by Abby is a self-striping one. She's the watermelon yarn girl, but she does lots of other wonderful self-striping yarns. I did a pair of scrappy socks with her yarns uh, not too long ago. I think I showed it on one of the podcasts. Um, 20 and 40 yards for her both. And then Lavender Loon, who has beautiful yarn as well. And I've got her a 20 and a 40 as well. I think that's everything for December, if I remember right. Some of them are full. Some still have spots open. So check those out as well if you're looking for mini skeins. So <clears throat> I feel like just so much information to share. And my voice is going on me. So I have something exciting to tell you about. I had a wonderful donation of a review item for me to use and love and talk about and a giveaway for all of you. This one, I'm not gonna put in a cow. I think I'm just gonna post a giveaway thread on the group. Um, again, you have to be a member of the group to win, but I'm gonna just post a thread over there. I'm gonna ask you to head over to her shop and check it out and let me know which of her bags you love the most. And I might add another fun prompt. I can't decide. I think it's fun when podcasters do some. I know. How about this? We'll do head over to her group or her shop and let me know what you like of her in her shop. But then also, what is your favorite thing to cook for Thanksgiving dinner if you're in the U.S.? Well, I guess Canada has Thanksgiving, but it's not the same time. So what is your very favorite thing to cook for Thanksgiving? My daughter is cooking our Thanksgiving, so I actually won't be cooking, but it'll be fun to hear what everybody likes to eat and enjoy. So this is the bag. Isn't it stinking adorable? Chickens knitting, right? 
so cute. And it is from Party of Five Crafts. Here's her little tag on her bag. This is a wonderfully made bag, zipper. The inside fabric is super fun, got all kinds of words, knitting words. It's boxed bottom, which is nice because that makes it stand up nice when you're working. Easily fit a pair of socks. I think even a shawl, two or three um, skeins of yarn in here. Two, I would say at least skeins of yarn in here. And it's just such a nice, it's got a little yarn zipper pull on here. Such a nice bag. I'm so appreciative of Claudia of sending me this bag. And this one's for me to use and love. And this, I'll give you a close up of her tag. This is yours. One lucky winner will win. It's the same bag, exact same bag, just all packaged up beautifully. And chickens knitting, right? Who doesn't love that? So fun. <laughs> so this will be our giveaway for this week um, or for this podcast. I will, with Thanksgiving and all, I can't decide. I will post a thread and I will put the dates in there. I'm thinking that I probably won't pull the name. What's today? Is today's November 3rd, 13th. I don't know what date it'll close. I'll put it in the thread and we'll get it posted up there. Comment. Remember, comment what is your favorite thing to cook for Thanksgiving. And maybe we'll just do kind of a quick turnaround. We'll just do a few weeks. I don't know know I don't know what I'll do yet I haven't decided so we will I will put that up there let me know what you like to cook for Thanksgiving and go check out her shop she has fantastic bags she's got some beautiful Christmas bags in there right now too party of five crafts thank you so much Claudia for that wonderful wonderful donation so next if you could see over here basically all of this area right over here are Christmas sock things I want to talk about. Sorry about my clock if you can hear that. So, but I think before we get to that, I want to talk about one more thing um, for the Etsy shop. And then we'll get to all of that Christmas sock stuff. So... In the, Chris, in the Etsy shop, Happy Scrappy Life on Etsy, I just added, well, first of all, we still have a whole bunch of de-stash stuff up there. I've got yarn and needles and fabric. A lot has sold, but there's still a whole bunch available. So if you are looking for some fun yarn or fabric or a few knitting needles still at a de-stash price, come check it out. But today I wanted to tell you about three different mini skein bundles that I posted. So these are from October Swaps. They didn't, all of them didn't sell. So I thought I would go ahead and post them in the Etsy shop. So maybe some of you would be interested. So the first ones I wanna talk about are from Wild Happy Color and they are 40 yard minis. And this is the package. There's the list of the colorways and there's all the minis. Here's the back of it. If you head over to Etsy, you can see a nice picture of all of them laid out nicely, but they're beautiful yarns. 40 yard minis, and there's multiple sets of these over there in the shop, maybe three or four, I can't remember. The next one is Tangled Strings. This one's a 20 yard swap, so you get 20 minis, 20 yards each. And here's just a little sneak peek of the colors. Like I said with the others, same with this one. Head over to the Etsy shop and you can see some better pictures of them. And then the last one that I added is Critium Handmade, 20 yards also. So again, 20 minis, and here are hers. I'm 
pretty sure for both Tangled Strings and Critium Handmade, I've got maybe five or six available. So this is an awesome way if you didn't sign up for the swaps um, in October for the swapless swaps, or maybe you didn't even know about them, maybe you just found out about this with me, head over to the Etsy shop, Happy Scrappy Life on Etsy, and you can buy a, a pack now. So this is all three of the different ones that are available in the Etsy shop right now, and they're ready to ship, so head over and grab yourself some if you want. They are great for so many different scrappy projects, but with Christmas coming, they're also fun for a gift. If you know a knitter, especially that loves scrappy projects, check them out. If you would end up buying for a Christmas gift and you would like it shipped directly to the recipient instead of you, I can totally do that. Just put a note in your order and let me know and we can get it shipped to the right person. So if you're looking for mini skeins and you don't want to wait until the next batch mail out, check out the Etsy shop. Happy Scrappy Life Etsy on Etsy. I'll put the links down below and in the show notes. So I guess this would be considered whips, but also future knitting. Help me decide what to do here segment. I started last year five. No, that's not true. One, two, three, four pairs of scrappy, or I'm sorry, man, four pairs of Christmas socks. And then I also have two more Christmas yarns that I didn't get started yet. I started them all last year. <clears throat> I think around Thanksgiving, maybe a little before or after, I can't remember. Um, maybe at the beginning of November, I can't remember. Didn't finish any. Didn't even get to a heel on any. Got about this far on most of them. It's ridiculous. So I think that I want to keep working on them. Part of me thinks that going to um, Ashley's for Thanksgiving, which I talked about on the last podcast, I keep saying it like you guys just know, but maybe you're new and you don't know what I'm talking about. My husband and I are going to visit our daughter. She's 24 and lives in Indiana, and we're going to visit her for Thanksgiving, but we're gonna be there for almost a week, we're going on Tuesday and leaving on Sunday. So that's gonna be awesome. She lives about four hours from here, so we'll have the car drive and then we'll be there. And then from there, I am leaving. My parents are coming also to think for Thanksgiving at her house. On that Sunday, I'm leaving with them and driving to Florida, which is like, I don't even remember what we looked up, 14 or 16 hours or something, driving down to Florida with them. And then I'll be there in Florida for a few nights, four or five nights. Tom treated me to a hotel all by myself, so hopefully I don't get too scared. And then I'm flying home the following Friday, December 1st. So... As a result of that, our goal is to get all of our, as much of our sock yarn swappers work done before we go and then finish it up when we get home. So essentially for uh, almost two weeks, I won't have to work on minis at all and I can just relax and knit or crochet. And so I'm trying to decide what I wanna work on. And I thought, well, it's Thanksgiving time and I can start on some Christmas socks. So then I pulled out all these projects and I just have thoughts about all of them and I don't, I don't know. So I, I'm going to go through each of them and see what you guys think and let me know what you think would be good or bad and what I should do. So first let's start with the yarn that I haven't actually started yet. So the first ones are these. They're already caked up separate so that's nice. And this is from Abby, Artistic Yarn by Abby, who we're doing the swap in December. And this is called Ribbon Candon. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Ribbon Candy is the colorway. And it's self-striping. Um, as you can see, it'll stripe up all these different greens and like ribbon candy. So that's one. Haven't got it started yet. Really want to start them. Love them. And then the next one is from Lanai. I think that's how I say it. Lanai yarn, and it's sparkle yarn, and it's called Peppermint Twist. 
Can you see the sparkle there? Yeah, a little bit. So it's white and it's got reds and greens and black and it's just variegated and sparkly. So that's the second one that I have. I wanna start both of those, but then I have all these other ones that I need to start. Or I mean that I already started that I need to work on. And of course, that means I need sock yarn or sock needles, which I don't think I have anymore, but then I could steal them from a project that I'm not finishing yet. I don't know. So those two I have that I need to decide what I'm gonna do about the yarn. I have the yarn that I need to decide if I'm gonna start or not. And then I have four pairs that I did start that I need to decide where I'm gonna go with. So this one is from Fiddle Knits Yarn. And I was doing the Pebble Socks pattern. <laughs> There's a couple progress keepers. We'll talk about those in a minute. Aren't they cute? They're Christmassy. But the pattern, you can see it's a little bit of a texture. It's from Mina Phillips, the Knitting Expat podcast. And the, the yarn, I just, Tom doesn't think this is Christmassy. And it's only called Starry Night. So technically, it's not like a Christmas colorway name. But for me, it makes me think of a winter night and a winter sky with the snow and the the stars and the blue just I don't know it feels Christmassy to me so my issue with these are I did them on a US 2 typically I knit on a US five and a half five and a half oh my word those would be gigantic US one and a half for socks these I did on a two I have another one more pair it looks like that I did on a two I don't know why maybe that's all I had available but then as you can see these are this is not a two this is way smaller cheap needles that I got off of Amazon or maybe even eBay I don't remember um, I must have stolen these needles at some point for a different pair of socks that I'll have to then steal back if I'm gonna work on these I'm trying to decide they seem huge to me they just seem big way bigger than my finger so I'm trying to decide if I want to continue with these or if I want to rip these out and start again. I don't know. I do like the texture. Um, I've never actually finished a pair of textured pattern socks of any type. I think I would enjoy wearing them. They feel like they'd probably be squishier and cozier. And especially since most of the time I'm at home, I don't wear my... I don't go out much. I'm home a lot. So I don't wear my socks out a lot. I wear them at home. And so the thickness of them doesn't matter as much. I feel like they'd be cozier and warmer. And it's kind of nice to have a little bit of a pattern to work on that isn't too difficult. My problem is they're bigger. And I don't know if I want to continue with socks that I think are going to end up being too big. The other problem is if I'm right about these, this heel flap and gusset, fitting my foot a lot better, then I kind of feel like I should rip out all of these socks. They're all toe up and go back, restart them on the right size needle um, and do them cuff down so that I can do a heel flap and gusset. But then I do have the flegal heel that I've started on those other ones that I need to finish to see how they fit. I don't know. And then part of me thinks don't do any Christmas socks just stick them all in your little butt, make a little nice little package up, wait till next year, figure out what you're doing about socks and how they fit and which kind you like best, and then next year do your Christmas socks. But yet it's fun to work on Christmas yarn at Christmas time. But yet I could put them on my blankets. I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you think I should do? So this is the first pair, and they are... Uh, on a US 2 so I can't decide if I should rip them out or not or leave them next pair are another pattern pair I just keep pulling them out this project bag is a Christmas bag that I actually made myself a couple years ago it's a drawstring and it is the Grinch I made them when I was working on a pair of Grinch socks which I will show maybe next podcast, but it's fun. It's fun to make project bags. I might make more. 
Um, maybe in December or January, I might start adding some to the Etsy shop. They're fun to make. But this pair is on, I feel like a sneeze is coming, I hope not. I'm a little bit of a dramatic sneezer. Maybe it was just a yawn, sorry about that. So this, oh, you know what? Let me show you the actual ball of yarn for that other one. So you can get a better idea of what it looks like. That looks Christmas, right? Somebody's gotta agree with me. Starry Nights, Fiddle Knits yarn. But this is sock, right, um, Simply Socks in Indiana. Love that store. Was hoping they're only open certain days. Was hoping I would get to go when I went to Ashley's for Thanksgiving, but they're not gonna be open those days. So that's sad. Probably a good thing, but sad. So this is the next pair. And these are on Leading Men Fiber Arts Oh Christmas Tree yarn. And I love this yarn. Man, the light isn't very good. I need to make it brighter over here. I love this yarn. Isn't it pretty? It's a like Christmas lights. And this is a, another pattern one, and it's the Waffle Sock. And I think that pattern might be written for thicker yarn. And I just um, adjusted it to make it the right number for my stitch number, my stitch count. But it's very fun little knit. Um, you can see these are the long, I think, maybe not, maybe the vanilla ones. But these are longer than the Starry Night ones. Um, but again, I did these on a US 2. I don't know why. And they're still on the right needle, so that's a start. But again, they're toe up and they're on a US too. And I just don't know. I don't know if I should rip them out and go with cuff down. I don't know if I should rip them out and go with a size smaller or maybe not as many stitches. I guess that'd be an option if I do it on a two, don't do quite as many stitches. It's huge too. Um, I'm going to compare them to these query ones that I'm doing on one and a half. So of course this is the foot compared to the leg, but yeah, look, it's, but it's still the same stitch count all the way around. This is gonna be hard to hold up, but. So look there, there's all that extra green fabric. I've got it matched up on this side and I've got all that. That's probably one, two, three, six or eight stitches extra. So, now I have a tangled mess. <laughs> so, do I rip out? I mean, I don't have a ton on any of these. It's not like I've got almost all these soft knit. Part of me thinks rip out and restart with less stitches or, which would be an option because I have more of these size two needles, less stitches and um, the size two needle or go to a one and a half needle, cuff down or toe up, flegal heel, heel or heel flap and gusset. I really did enjoy knitting the heel flap and gusset. I really, really like that. I don't like doing all of the ribbing at the beginning, but or do I wait and see what happens next year? I don't know. This is, but the yarn is also gorgeous. That's the thing. This is it in a cake. And again, this is Leading Men Fiber Arts and the colorway is called Oh Christmas Tree. Highly recommend it. The next pair I wanted to talk about. Oh yeah, these are even a little longer, I think. This is from Knit Mona, which I don't believe she's dying anymore, which is really sad. But Knit Mona, and the colorway is called Vintage Christmas. And these are just vanilla socks. Very Christmas feel, right? I mean, these feel like Christmas. They look like Christmas to me. And here's the cake. Fun, right? 
These ones are vanilla and they are on a one and a half. So I feel better about that, but they are uh, toe up. So, and again, I mean, there's, they're started. If we do my little thing about putting them on my hand, I still have a long way to go before I would get to where I would do my heel. I don't know. Do I rip them out? Do I start again? I don't know. I'm sitting here thinking it would be kind of fun to do a pair. Oh my gosh, excuse me. A pair of Christmas socks for me, a pair of Christmas socks for Ashley. And a pair of Christmas socks for Tom. But I don't know if I could get all those done by Christmas. <laughs> well, I could if I would just work on them. But I want to work on other things. So I don't know. And then the last pair is from Fiber Nymph Dye Works. And it is a pair of her inversible yarns, which I love. Her inversible sets. This is sparkle, inversible sparkle yarn. Here are the two cakes. And it's cranberry and forest are the two colorways. So as you can see, this one is the cranberry with mostly the red with a little bit of green. And this is the forest, which is mostly green with a little bit of red. They're self-striping and they're sparkly. What's well, not to love, right? But this pair, I am pretty sure I will rip out for sure because I just can't get the hang of it. This pair I thought I would try out doing on nine inch circs. Uh, concurrently, I guess is the way to say it. So with a nine inch circ, you just knit, looking to see, I've got a little marker here to know where I'm starting. You just knit around and around and around and around and around which in theory should go so much faster and would be awesome for on the airplane but I can't get the feel of it now maybe I should try again maybe I should leave them on here and try again and I don't know what size US what US size the needles are for these ones I don't remember but I have both of them going as you can see this one's gonna be mainly red with a little bit of green and this one is mainly green with a little bit of red which I like better because I like green and the sparkle is beautiful it's like I just got the toe decrease or increases done so I'm ready to just knit straight now I don't know do any of you knit on nine inch circs do you like it do you have any tips for me for my fingers and how to do it the best Looks like these are both from Chiago. Yeah, they are, which I like. So I don't know, I can't decide. Do I keep going with these and see what I think? Do I rip them out and go to regular needles? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. So I would love your opinions. I thought I would share last year when I went on this big, I'm gonna knit all the Christmas socks, obviously didn't get very far. I bought some really cute Christmas project progress keepers. So I don't know if I can make them turn around right or not, but they are from Mothy and the Squid. Lots of different Christmas ones. And then I bought a whole other set, Mothy and the Squid, that are all just snow. At the very least, I will probably be putting Christmas progress keepers on my projects. I don't know what to do about my Christmas socks. Tell me what you guys think. Do you think I should rip them out and start over? Do you think I should wait till next year? I doubt if that's gonna be an idea from anybody, but maybe it's smart. Do I go on with them the way they are now? Do I take the challenge to try to knit Tom and Ashley each a pair too before Christmas? Not as a gift, but just to knit them a pair. I don't know. I really don't know. So that's everything. That's all of the knitting I've got. The only other thing I guess to kind of talk about is my trip and trying to decide another big decision you can help me with. If I should 
what I should take with me to work on. <sighs> Maybe I'll do a little short episode, not really an episode, but just a little short check-in next week right before we leave. We'll see. Maybe I'll do that and talk about the projects I decided to take with me um, for our trip. I'll have so much time, car knitting time, and so much time in the hotel and probably even just sitting around visiting with everybody. Um, I'd like to be stocked up on projects and have good projects to work on. But yet, on the other hand, I don't know what I want to take. I love working on these blankets so much, but will I get bored with only one project? I can't pack a whole suitcase full of projects. Maybe bringing the Christmas socks would be smart because then I would focus on them. I'd have them with me. I don't know. So that is the big decision for this time. Now, scheduling. I don't know what's going to happen with that either. I'm really sorry. I would really like to do it every two weeks. So every two weeks would be the Monday that I, after Thanksgiving that I am in Florida. And we'll be traveling that day, getting into the hotel that day. So I don't know if I would want to record while I'm on the trip. Um, I thought about recording maybe a little earlier when I was at Ashley's and try to get everyone on camera and do a little bit of a talk there. I don't know. I thought just now I said I might, maybe I'll record right before I go and talk a little bit about what I'm taking with me to work on. That's an option. Um, and then Christmas comes. Ashley will be here. Before that, Tom and I are going to Pittsburgh. It's going to be a busy couple months. So we'll see. Hopefully I get back to you soon. If anybody has any questions or anything you want to talk to me about, shoot me a message. Uh, comment down below. Message me on Ravelry, on Facebook, on Instagram, wherever. I love interacting with all of you. I love visiting with you. And I'm excited about the podcast and about the group. Head over, join in our knit alongs and our crochet along. Check out the giveaway. Um, check out the swaps and the Etsy shop if you're interested. And I hope all of you have a wonderful week or so, couple weeks. I don't know when I'll talk to you again. I will do my best to get on here, at least say hi for a minute. And thanks so much for watching. Bye.